To obtain the best ploughing results, it is essential to prepare both tractor and plough correctly. In the following minutes, we would like to give you simple and practical instructions on how to achieve the best performance. In the first part, you will see which preparations need to be made on your tractor. The second part shows you the correct settings of your plough before the actual work. In the third part, you learn about how to adjust your plough while working. An efficient work requires that the correct adjustments be made on the tractor first. As a principle, when using a reversible plough, tractor settings must be identical right and left. The front and rear inside wheel settings of the tractor are very important. They actually control the front furrow width of the plough. Make sure that the inside measurement between the rear wheels is within the limits indicated in the plough operator manual supplied with the plough. The distance between the front wheels should always be 0 to 10 centimetres wider than for the rear wheels. To ensure a uniform front furrow, the inside of the rear wheel should always run against the furrow wall. The air pressure should be checked. The tyres on the same axle must have the same pressure. The actual tyre pressure should comply with the manufacturer's recommendations and hence guarantee the best stability and the best traction. The centre line indicates that the tractor works in the same angle in both directions. If the tyre pressure differs, the tractor and the plough will lean over to one side, as shown here, which will affect the quality of the ploughing. The tractor lower link arms should be adjusted to the same height. The easiest way is to measure the length of the lift arms. Now to the plough itself. Some plough adjustments can be made before starting to plough. First check that the cross shaft is positioned centrally to the headstock. Tractor and plough are connected with a three-point linkage. To ensure that the plough follows the tractor correctly, it is important that the cross shaft has the correct length. The extension of the lower linkage arm should cross the tractor right behind the front axle. If the cross shaft is too short, the lift arms will be almost parallel and the plough will not follow the tractor, but wander from side to side. Now the plough can be connected. On an auto reset plough, the leaf springs should be preset to a length of 70 centimetres. Measure the distance between the two leaf spring pins. You can also make this measurement with a long spanner which is marked accordingly. Necessary corrections can be made with it. To achieve good ploughing, the skimmers must be set to the correct depth. The normal depth would be 2 to 5 centimetres, depending on soil conditions. It is important that all skimmers be adjusted equally. Marks on the skimmer arm help you to adjust it. To guarantee a clear cut of the furrow wall, a disc coulter should be adjusted 1 to 2 cm wider than the furrow width. Move the disc coulter to the land side and check. Depending on the soil conditions, the maximum working depth should be between 4 and 10 cm. As a golden rule, the disc should be set to work half of the ploughing depth. The plough is now ready to work. Further adjustments must be carried out in the field. We first need to check the ploughing depth. Plough only a distance of approximately 10 metres and measure how deep the plough is working. Should the depth be corrected, lift the plough off the field. Adjust the working depth with the screws on the depth wheel. Make sure that both sides have the same settings. Plough a few more metres and check that the front and rear of the plough work to the same depth. 
Stand a little bit back from the plow and ensure that the plow frame is parallel to the ground. If the top link is too short, the first furrow will work too deep. If the top link is too long, the first furrow will be too shallow. With correct adjustments as shown, all bodies will plough at the same depth. The top link should always be connected lower on the tractor than on the plough. To ensure that the plough follows the contours of the field, we recommend to use the slotted hole in the headstock. The top link pin should be in the middle of the hole when the plough stands on a flat field. To ensure that the plough operates upright in both directions, position yourself behind the plough and check that the plough legs are 90 degrees to the ground. If the plough is not upright but leans towards the ploughed land, the front furrow will be too wide and deep. It would also have a negative impact on the plough's penetration. If the plough leans away from its work, the front furrow will be too small. In both cases, the furrow will be uneven. With the correct adjustments, all bodies will have the same working depth. The adjustment is carried out by means of the two stop screws for the turnover cylinders, respectively right and left side. Finally, we should set the width of the first furrow. This should equal the working width set by the plough's Veromat system. To ensure that the Veromat indicator shows the correct ploughing width, measure the width between the point and the land side of one furrow. The first furrow should be set to the same width. Corrections are done by the mechanical or hydraulic first furrow adjustment. To find out if you have achieved the desired result, take a 3 metre distance measurement. Mark a point on the unploughed land. Plough and pass the mark and measure again. With the difference of the two measurements, you will find the plough's actual working width. Variomart offers the comfort of ploughing width adjustments while driving. After these few adjustments, your plough is now ready for quality ploughing. Easy to set and to operate. Enjoy your day.